Hey everybody, welcome to Mix Life. I'm here with Rich today. We uh, we're all still kind of recovering from Thanksgiving and kind of powering through the holidays. So we're gonna just uh, talk some shit about some shit and some flavors and things. Maybe what's up, Rick? Not much, man. Yeah, no, I'm still on a Thanksgiving hangover. I'm still trying to work my way through a uh, fridge full of leftovers at this point. So it's going mostly successfully. Nice. Our family is pretty non-traditional on Thanksgiving. So we, because uh, invariably, like some of us work, like I worked on Thanksgiving all day. Uh, so we do like a Sunday breakfast the weekend after. So I don't have any fridge full of leftovers or a pile of turkey. But uh, it's all good because I ate like four pounds of biscuits and gravy on Sunday. So that was <laughs> worth it. I um. Yeah, it's funny because, like, I don't hate turkey, I guess, the day of. And, you know, you go through those times where you, like, try to learn how to cook a turkey that doesn't suck. And it was mostly okay. But I hate turkey leftovers after, like, the second day because it gets that weird, like, turkey smell. Like, I don't know what the hell that turkey smell is, but it starts to smell like turkey and that drives me nuts. So I just yeah. tried to, like, power through all the turkey I could in the next day and then just turn the rest of it into goddamn stock. It smells like senior discount day at the fucking deli. Dude, right? like, chemically, like, what is that smell? Because it is the, the worst goddamn thing, and it shows up after you have turkey in the fridge for, like, a day. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. Uh, I was never interested enough. Uh, yeah, I was just never interested enough. Andre Roth says, you, hello, my manly love concrete. Aw, so, hello, Andre Roth. <laughs> I am honored. And also hi to Jason Johnson and John Vapes. Uh, those are the two hanging out. So yeah, and mix a lot. Mix a lot. There we go. I just I just ignore people. I'm sorry. Yeah, fuck that guy. No, but we've we've officially hit like the conceptual stage of my Thanksgiving leftovers. Like I made a Thanksgiving cheese log tonight out of some leftover stuff, and that was pretty good. Very nice, very nice. Uh, I bought a pizza on my way home. That's what I did today. Okay. Not exciting at all. <laughs> I've also been getting into baking a little bit, like just trying a little bit. And uh, my dinner rolls turned out like biscuits because I overworked them. And so it was kind of fun trying to figure out some way to like use those. I think I ended up making like a bizarro world biscuits and gravy with, uh, with my leftover rolls in the turkey. I think that was probably my leftover hit out of this batch. Nice, nice. I do. I love dinner rolls. They're so good. Well, I love dinner rolls too, but apparently I can't bake them because, like, I had to like double and a half, like, multiply recipe by two and a half, and so I got lazy mixing in the final flour. So I was just like working in the flour a bit at a time, and I overworked the gluten, and so everything turned out like all weird and hard and shit. Like, I'm not qualified to bake. I don't have the follow through for it. Baking is a lot like final recipe mixing, right? Where it, it, like, once you're in like the final stages, everything has to be like it's kind of meticulous, right? Because you're achieving that final level of balance, and you don't you don't have as much room for like fucking negotiation when you're working with, you know, more more finite balance. Um, I haven't had a lot of time, so this week uh, I finally pumped out my last contract I had sitting on my table. Uh, so I have been just hammering out commercial recipes, which is kind of a different game. Uh, and then I mixed up a couple of weirdo floral recipes last night in honor of uh, our last show on Noted. We sat around thinking about florals again for a while. And I haven't for a bit because I've been working on commercial stuff. <laughs> Are you saying that the flowers aren't big sellers? <laughs> uh, I'm saying exactly that. And if you saw my payment payouts from the last round of chefs, you would understand that it, it was a risk to release those as one shots. Uh, yeah. And they didn't get bad reviews. Nobody, nobody outright said anything bad about them. But I think there's a lot of people where it's just not their thing. Yeah. And I've been kind of trying to prep up for herbs next week on Noted. So if you guys are going to be around on Monday night, we'll also be doing Noted on Monday. Rick, are you, you're going to be there too, right? Yeah, I'll be there too. Completely fucking lost. It'll be great. So her herbs and I assume spices is like rolled into that too. I don't think so because I think they had a spice show, so they've had like flowers and spices, and I think this might even be like the second herb show. So like everything. Sure so they. Tr oh, I know we did a flavor of the week herbs, but I can't. I, I, you know, I think they did. I think they just rolled herbs up into the the end of florals last year. 
like in one show maybe. Okay. I don't know, they were close together. I can't remember. Oh, so Rusty T ordered the honeysuckle thanks to that noted episode. Go yeah. with God, my son. Yeah. The rabbit <laughs> hole just gets fuckier after that, okay? Uh, Pretty soon you'll be out there giving hand jobs for some extra Flavora elderflower. It's a slippery slope. I also discovered that if you use too much Flavora rose, it starts to taste like chocolate and it's fucking weird. I don't like that and I don't trust that. Uh, I don't know why, but I made like a watermelon strawberry rose. But I over poured and I ended up using almost 2%. And uh, <laughs> it has like a weird, like, you know, like, you know, like the acai date, the chocolate note in their acai berry? Yeah. Like, it's like that. Oh, shit. And I'm like, what the, what the fuck is happening? It was just Loran's watermelon and Shisha strawberry and rose. Yeah. And I'm like, what the, what, the, what the fuck is this? I didn't pick that up at all when I was single flavor testing it, but that's about as far as I went with it. It was like, oh, hey, does this rose violently turn my stomach? Nope. I mean, like it, it could be because I've been sampling like a ton of like my finalized commercial recipes. Yeah. So my palate is just like fucking blasted to death right now. <laughs> just resurfaced with sucralose particles. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I never, I never, I never, I never test my samples after sucralose, only before. Yeah. I never vape them with sucralose. Anyway. Just flying fucking blind at the end. <laughs> I love it. Well, the super, I mean, I, I have a pretty fair understanding of how much sucralose I need to like push it from where I like it to where I think other people, like the commercial market will like it because I've been doing it long enough. Yeah. <sighs> but, uh, but yeah, like I, so I have a pretty standardized approach to how to sweeten things post, post flavoring. And they're uh, I, I six percent flavor with sweetener, right? That's the trade pretty, secret. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, well, like three <laughs> percent. Actually, I think uh, my last round, I think I didn't use more than two percent in anything. Yeah, that's kind of my standard. Is like okay, depending on what the venue is. If it's like a one shot, then like one percent sweetener. If it's uh, commercial juice, like two percent sweetener. Yeah. I mean, of Flavor West, uh, for like one shots, like two percent yeah. TP. I mean, and, and Flavor West is like really like four percent normal sweetener, right? Yeah, and it's like forty percent sucralose. Uh, so it's fucking strong as fuck. <laughs> so two percent sweetener is a shitload for the record, people. If you're using Flavor West sweetener and you're using two percent, it's probably too much. Yeah, and there, I don't know. There are a few things that I really like it in, like candy recipes. I like. I mean, if I, I really want to, like, force that, like, sugar bomb onto it, Flavor West yeah. is the way to do it. And then, uh, what else was I messing with this week? I used up all my Flavora gin, and I'm really upset about it. You just going to send an angry letter saying they need to hurry up and release that? Yeah, so if you guys didn't know before, Flavora gin is coming out soon, and it is a strong competitor for Vape Train's gin domination in the market. I mean, I think it gets up there. I mean, I still like the Flavor Monks Pure Gin just that much better, but fuck Flavor Monks. So, yeah. No, I agree. Like, their, their, their Pure Gin and uh, the Vero Gin, all of their gins were fucking fantastic. But it's just really difficult. They're, they're just not accessible for DIYers, I don't think, in my opinion. I'm sure that some people may feel otherwise. Maybe people who live closer to Belgium and it doesn't cost them a fucking arm and a leg to get a goddamn tin in a bottle. I think it still costs the Belgians a, an arm and a leg. They just have that Belgian national pride we've heard so much about. I mean, I heard all Belgians are like rich, right? Like, yeah. Have you been like to Belgium that. before? Like everything's everything's fancy there and nobody looks poor or homeless. Maybe they just keep them in cages somewhere. <laughs> I could make some uh some light European socialism jokes, but you know, <laughs> we don't want to alienate people. Yeah, that might be too far today. <laughs> might be too far today. <laughs> Only might be though. Uh, so I'm looking forward though to like really like now that I've like mostly cleared my plate. Uh, we have one more run at a new project coming out soon. That's basically just about finished, and we'll hopefully be finished this week. We can start really like crushing out some videos and some other stuff. Uh, I have that second scale now that is the, the, the silly one that uh, the wheat Jeff dealer gave, scale, yeah. Lavora gave us, and uh, you know, I wasn't real pumped about it when they first put these out there, right? There's just these little uh, these little guys here. Um, when when they set these out on the tables, uh, I thought that they were only 
uh, to the, the tenth and not to the hundredth. Um, but I was corrected as as I opened it and figured out otherwise. Um, and it, then I used it through the weekend while we were there, and I I actually like it just fine. And I don't have I didn't have any problems with the the LED shutting off on me in between flavors and stuff. Like if you set all your stuff out in front of you and you have like a plan in advance, I didn't have any issues with it shutting off on me in between uh, switching flavors. That might be different for you folks on the the team syringe side of things. <laughs> or if you're fucking around with pipettes and shit, I don't know. But if you're on the team syringe side of things, we have no help for you. We yeah, really Paul, don't. Paul Lewis, he's the team syringe guy. <laughs> right? Sorry, Lewis. Lewis from Chefs. That's who I'm referring to. He still makes his by by volume. Uh, you people, I love him, but man, you can you can lead people to water, but you can't make them stop using their goddamn syringes. That's the problem. Well, I mean, that's. I don't, I don't know. It's a sad thing. Like, I feel at this point, if you're still mixing by volume, you're mostly doing it to be contrary. And, and I'm sorry, but you're terrible. <laughs> I just, I don't get it. I, you know, I get the, whatever, mixing by volume is fine. It's the, the cleanup and, uh, and plus, like, having to have a million of them unless you want to, like, fucking cross-contaminate every flavor on your goddamn, uh, you know, table. Yeah. Right, because right, that's those are your two choices. Either you have a million fucking tips, like one for every bottle, and for somebody who has as many bottles as me, that's a real fucking problem, right? And in a mixing session where I'm working on like two or three different recipes, it's highly likely that I'll use fifty or sixty bottles in a day. Yeah, um, and it's just too much, right? Okay, like Jason Johnson, I only mix volume when rushing. Uh, juice when I'm running out the door. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Like, if you're just doing, like, a one-shot or whatever, you just need something to vape, like, really quick. Like, I'm super lazy about that. If I just need something, I'll just squirt a bunch in a bottle and call it about good. But, yeah, actual recipe development stuff, like, I don't understand how that's a more viable option than just buying you know, a damn skin. You know what? And, and these fucking, these bottles from Liquid Bomb. <laughs> They're not right? helping things. They <laughs> have ruined my... <laughs> Capacity for accuracy, right? Yeah. Because they have these handy dandy. It's hard to see. Here. Let's see if I can get it in focus, right? This fucking measuring thing. Uh, uh, no, it's not gonna work, right? So it's they have this measuring gonna, thing, yeah, right? It's never gonna work. Fucking ruler right here. It tells you like roughly where ten percent is and roughly where twenty percent is. And uh, uh, I'll be honest. In between trying to fight through. Uh, like Vegas recovery and getting out uh, a client's um, round of samples, 10 samples, um, like finished recipes since just since I got back from Vegas uh, it's been a nightmare. So everything that I've mixed to like vape for myself has literally been chef's one shots. And half the time it's like I wake up and I'm like, fuck, I've only got like 15 mils left. Probably not going to last all day. And I run out here. And I just fucking squirt a one shot into this bottle and fill it with fucking Nick and VG and walk out the door and shake it on my drive to the work. You know, like I've been in a, I've been I've been in a hurry a lot lately. Yeah, I I don't know. I've kind of been on that turning my brain off thing when I'm not actively developing anything. It's getting sadder and sadder. It really is. Well, I, I mean, I feel like you kind of have to, right? Like if you if you're burning off all your creative energy. On, like, on trying to work out like either commercial stuff or just just stuff in general, right? Your creative yeah. mixes. Like when you go to mix stuff just to vape, like just to have to carry around or whatever, and you want to make a sixty or a hundred and twenty, you don't want to obviously you don't want to make a hundred and twenty of like a test batch recipe. So you just, I mean, yeah, you just kind of fucking shut down and do something stupid and easy, you know. I mean, for this, like, I've been squonking this, and it's, I even forget what mint it is specifically, but I literally just ripped the cap off a bottle, a 10 mil bottle, dumped it in, and dumped a bunch of base on top of it and called it good. I mean, that's pretty reasonable. It's a good approach. You know, like, there's definitely days where I do that, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's all the time. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with it. And, uh, you know, when we first started doing one shots, I was really like, I don't know about these one shot business. But now that I've been using them more, like in practice, it's, it's fucking, it's fucking great because, 
like all the chefs, like chefs flavors, those guys hate to steep anything. So pretty much everything they make is kind of geared towards people that just shake and vape. Yeah. Um, Cause it, yeah, I don't, they just, they don't steep stuff. Lewis is like, if it doesn't, if it sucks when I first shake it up, I'm not going to vape it in a week. Like, <laughs> I ain't got that kind of time, son. Yeah. Rusty, you assume that we're not already just free basing nicotine off of foil. We stay loyal to that foil, bro. Uh, speaking of uh, liquid vine, I've been using that 24 milligram Nixel that they have. How is it? And it's been, it's fucking fantastic. So I'm still diluting it, and not using a, I'm not vaping a full like 24 milligrams. Like I'm at like yeah. six ish dripping right, um, with salts, but it's way way smoother than the Nick River salts by a mile. Because I even vaping six milligram salts from Nick River was a little rough. But theirs is really good. Um, I really like it, and I can't. So he said, Ash said that there's something in the works so that they'll be releasing some a range of potencies for Nick Seltz. I'm pretty excited about it. Whoever their new supplier is, it's not Nick Select. Um, it's pretty stellar. Yeah, because they had that like Black Friday Cyber Monday deal -y thing, and I needed some Nick Seltz, and so I was like clicking over, and the only one that they were selling were the 24 milligram basic bottles. I was I was hoping they were going to start selling base soon, so I'm glad they're getting that sort of. So they out. have them. They have them in the 500 mils. Do they? Buy. But yeah, it's so. but it's like the 24 milligram. But it's still the 24 milligram stuff. Yeah, like I've just come to the conclusion with pod recipes, I need to just give up and buy VG salt so I can just literally put half Nick by volume and then just mix flavor on top of the other 50% and call it good. Yeah, as soon as – so first uh, I'm waiting on that Rage to come in. I, did, I ordered it even though it's purple. I mean, I think that's a feature and not a bug. Right, it's cool. I'm cool with it. Yeah. It's not a – it's not like a – Freaky, super bright, girly purple. It's at least like a middle range, like purple. It's like a, uh, weird gypsy pants purple. Yeah, it's it's a very like almost maroonish purple. Like it has a lot of red in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm okay with it, but I'm pretty excited about it. It'll be my first actual squonk mod. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I'll just end up packing up all my other mods and saying, fuck it, and just use that one forever. Uh, <laughs> for as long as it lasts, anyways. No expectations there. No, I, I mean, I just, because I, I love my recurve, but dripping on it is a fucking nightmare. And the same with my ghoul, right? Like, they're both prone to leaking if you drip. But if you don't drip, they're fine, right? Yeah. It's, it's literally just a hazard of having a large single coil in a tiny chamber. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I mean, the Rage is big and heavy. Like, don't let anybody say it is not a big, heavy, fuck off mod. Like, this thing is a brick. I'm but, chill with that though. Like I'm okay yeah. with having like a brick for a fucking mod, as long as it fits in my cup holder, right? In the car. yeah, it, it it will it will occupy your entire cup holder. So that's all right with me. It's cool. <laughs> the other cup holder is for a bottle of juice. So I mean, yeah, I don't actually have beverages in my car. Well, I just like the only reason I picked it up is because I caught one of the sales, and yeah, for like if you can catch one of the fifty dollars sales, like it's really hard to argue with it because I've been using it almost constantly and I've had no issues with it. Yeah, no, because I got to try yours in Shindos, and you guys are both rocking the recurve on it, and it's they're, they, it's a spectacular setup. Like, yeah, I couldn't ask for anything more out of a setup. Cause I, I use my recurve now on top of my dot mod, which is which is fine, but like I don't know, and I'm, I think I'm just gonna find like a good uh, mouth to lung RTA to go on this after that, uh, so I can work on like pod recipes or whatever. Yeah, my pod testing rigs right now, because I'm, I'm going over a couple pod juices. My pod testing rigs right now, I have the Berserker or Mini or whatever the hell. And, like, I'm kind of on the fence about it. It's not fantastic, but it's 18 millimeters, so I've got it on the old iStick 20. Um, and then I have, like, some 14 millimeter, like, bullshit clone thing from Fast Tech with, like, a 2.5 ohm coil in there. So the only thing that will drive it is, like, my DNA 200. So it's ridiculous. I love it. I get behind that. I think I, I still have some old Sigley 150s I could probably put on there. Yeah. So that's the, the Berserker, you said? Uh, the Berserker is the one that's 18 millimeters. And it's okay, but um, it's not fantastic. Like... I don't know if it's my coil or my build or whatever, but even when I'm squonking it, it seems to have a little bit of trouble keeping up. 
and uh, the cotton gets a little toasty. So I maybe look at a different direction for like a smaller atomizer under 22 millimeters if you wanted to go that way. Well, I'm probably just going to pick up a K-Fun clone. Yeah, I mean, they're, that too. Um, but, I mean, the K-Fun's a tank, so you ain't, you ain't need to even squonk that one. Mm -mm. Oh, exactly. So that's what, yeah, all my other mods, I'll just, I'll put, like, K-Fun clones on. So they'll be, like, dedicated mouth to lung, and then I'll just switch to bottom feed uh, RDAs. Like, I have got a whole new appreciation. I dug out, like, an old eye stick Pico and uh, put the Arctic Fox firmware on there, which I should have done, like, years ago or, I guess, a year ago at this point because it's so good. That that Arctic Fox firmware is just fantastic. And so I have, like, a Serpent Alto on top of it, and I've been rocking this way too much. It looks pretty cool. I like – I mean, it looks, like, like, small and decent and probably won't, like, fog out the car. Yeah. Yeah, it, I've got like a 12 milligram juice in here and like a 0.8 ohm coil running at like a grand total of 14 watts. It's working out okay. Yeah, I, now that I've like had a chance to like fuck around and pod some more, like I don't know, I feel like it might be worth like trying to find a you know, middle ground for development. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty bored with like the flavors that come out of it, so I want to be able to, I don't know, work harder on like building more nuanced flavors that are available for pods, right? Or, or mouth to lungers because I feel like it's kind of, I don't know, it's coming like out to the forefront a little bit more. I've given up on using any low percentages. And I know like Jarvis and stuff was talking about it beforehand. I was like, well, you don't have to go up to 40% with flavor. That's kind of why I wanted to pick up the VG Nick because I wanted to see what happened when I went up to like 40% or like 50% with flavor because I think like a lot of what the pod systems are doing have to be like, crazy percentages of like capella flavors and shit like that yeah definitely uh i was out at the uh out of the pub like a week ago and i had a chance to, uh, for whatever reason there was like 11 people with pods there so i had a chance to like kind of have the run of the run of the thing and like i don't know there was there was some interesting stuff out there um i don't know just because all those companies are making like nick salts now right yeah and uh they tasted like trash when I sampled them at the show, but most of them I sampled on like a low powered RDA and not on a mouth to lung device. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then once I got a chance to like and kind of give them the run on a few pod systems, like some of them were pretty decent. Did you um end up trying that mango pod for the soul? I want to say because I was a little bit let down. Yeah, I didn't like it that much. It's, it's funky. I think it's just it tastes like TFA Philippine mango. Yeah, but like a lot of. TFA Philippine mango with some kind of like cooler coolant in there. It's kind of a letdown. It's funny because like it's basic as fuck, but that spearmint was still just super good. It's that's I had I have saved a tiny little like little bit down here at the bottom of this fucking spearmint pod just so that I can have like one last satisfying puff of it. <laughs> it's fucking good. It's really good. It's a good spearmint. I want to recreate it. Just relishing that shit. And yeah, you can seriously just pull off like the bottom part of that if you get your fingernail in it. Like that bottom colored plug just pulls out. Nice. Andre Ross says after seven years, he still vapes mouth alone most of the time. He's just 10% cap double apple in it. There we go. I mean, there you go. And, and see that, I think that's a great thing about it. Like it's a. Uh, it's simplistic and it's good, right? Like it doesn't have to be complex to be good. Um, for day-to-day -day stuff, I I like to get I like to have complex flavor, but it doesn't have to be complex. And the the too much flavor hype, you know, I, I've always been kind of on the fence because generally speaking, when I'm vaping like a mid-powered RDA, I never go like with the those dudes that are like fucking mobbing down the street with a 90 watt fucking baby beast or whatever. Dude, that is so uh, like two years ago for ninety it. watt baby baby bees. Now they're all using like one hundred and seventy watts on like a free max mesh coil at like point one ohms. Right, and they're blowing clouds across the four lane freeway. You know, yeah. fucking cruising down the street. Like I, I don't, I never got into that. Uh, I know a lot of people that were into vaping super high powered devices. Obviously, would struggle with high highly flavored recipes, but. It's really dependent on the device you're using and the preference. 
uh, you know, of, of the end user. But I, I, you know, I have plenty of recipes that come in well under 10% and plenty of recipes that are much closer to 20%. And since I've been fucking with pods, I've, I've definitely pushed the, the envelope to 30% on a number of occasions and been successful. So it's, it's really just, it's really dependent on, uh, on what people are using, right? Like it's, the, there's no the, such thing as too much or too little. It's just, it's too situational. The, um, the thing that I've kind of noticed, like about the too much flavor thing that's gotten kind of weird as I've been vaping and developing more. Like, I can't remember the last time I got vapor's tongue that wasn't like related to some sort of sinus thing. Like, I don't know if you just met, like gradually just get immune to it or whatever, but it's been awesome not having to fight vapor's tongue with like switching between like super flavored juices and stuff. Like, I don't know if it's just something you get used to, but I haven't had that problem. I think I still get it if I vape the same thing all day. Yeah. But being who we are and, and doing what we do and mixing as frequently as we do, and I'll, I always have, like, like, I have one, two, three, four different recipes on my table right now, plus, like, six or seven of these little, like, tester recipes, right? Like, uh, So I, I always have, like, a million things in front of me to vape, and I never grab the same bottle twice, almost ever. Um, the only way I keep track of what I've been vaping recently is that I almost never put the cap back on right after I set the bottle down, right? <laughs> so I know that's the one I use last. Uh, <laughs> I just I just remember, like, after I started really, really testing shit, like, I would just, like, struggle with goddamn vapor's tongue. But I don't know if it's that I'm vaping more stuff on a rotating basis or whatever. But thankfully, for whatever reason, that hasn't been as much of an issue. Yeah, no, I, I haven't struggled with it as much, except for when I'm trying to cram out commercial recipes, and then I kind of notice that my, my note-taking ability and my, my ability to, like, pick out more nuanced stuff is a little different. But uh, I definitely get what you're saying. Uh, I think over time, it's a thing that kind of fades. But I, it's harder for new people who aren't as used to trying to, like, dissect the flavors that they're, you know, tasting and or smelling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it also probably helps that I'm usually vaping. If I'm not vaping something with a purpose, I'm usually just vaping enough menthol to singe your nose hairs. So that's yeah, that's true. <laughs> Cucumber, lemon, vanilla, spearmint. Hmm. Yeah, that that tastes good. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I mean, cucumber, lemon, and spearmint are definitely proven like rock rock solid. Vanilla could be an interesting counterpoint to it. From any standpoint, I may avoid one shots, and if it's more than fifty percent, I mostly avoid. Chefs is a pain, and most of their own mixes are twenty percent plus. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of their stuff that's twenty percent plus is. I mean, like, and I don't mean to sound like a dick or whatever, but it's built for instant gratification. Lewis shaking it up. Like, I think most of the bakers I've tried from them that are that say twenty percent would work fine at fifteen. Yeah, I, I actually I was just talking about that on their group today. Um, I tried I I bought I got like three bottles of that tickle me pink right, um, which is just a straightforward fruit, and I mixed the first one at twenty percent. It was decent, but after like a week, it was a little weird. So I I made another one at fifteen percent and set it aside and came back to it a week later, and I liked it a lot better. So if you're vaping it that day, twenty percent is fine. But if you're gonna actually steep your stuff, like you can use less with the chef's one shots and still get plenty of mileage out of them. <laughs> they're built for that instant gratification crowd no problem with the instant gratification crowd. well because because the reality of it is eh, people don't people don't fucking steep stuff right yeah. not just that's not just like lewis being like i don't steep stuff but it's like <laughs> his, entire, his entire customer base you know yeah. no offense to anybody watching but we know i watch the groups and not very many of you uh are big under the steeping thing right so people just don't want to wait they want to buy their juice and have it and be ready that's it in a way, and I get that, dude, because I do the same fucking thing, you know. Yeah, and like not just the bakeries too, like the fruitier stuff. I think I mixed up some green lush at the recommended twenty percent, and it almost fucking killed me. It's it's very strong, yeah. It is violent. <laughs> it's good. I like the green lush a lot, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely recommend using slightly less than the suggested percentage for chefs, in my opinion. Uh, I think they're all still really good flavors, and I haven't tried any other one-shots that I didn't like outright. They're all good. 
blueberry ice cream cake batter has been my ADV for a while. See, I can't, I, I can't, eat, I can't all day vape bakeries or like ice creams. Like it just, it is so heavy. <laughs> I'm and, just uh, on that. Give me all the menthol tip. That's my all day vape is more menthol than you can handle. Dude. So I overmixed pink with envy, not paying attention the other day. Mm. And it fucking blew my face off. Dude, it's so cold. Like, I literally, I've never experienced brain freeze from vaping, but it can happen. I can tell, I'm telling you, it can actually happen. Oh, yeah, no, it totally happen. does. Like, it's rough. I literally never, I'd never experienced it before. Like, I've gone too high with it, but I've never had it just like assault my, literally my entire cranium was in pain. It was, it was insane. So be careful with that stuff. <laughs> Wants to know. 23, my dude. So much. Eight percent flavora eggnog is too high for an eggnog vape. Um, it depends on what you're doing with it. Yeah, it depends. I mean, if you're like on a, like a mouth to lung, like sub twenty watts, probably not. And you don't have anything else going on in the recipe, like that could work if you're trying to do it on on an RDA at any kind of wattage and you want to be able to taste something besides flavora eggnog. Then yeah, probably dump it down a bit. Yeah, I think I've only used it in recipes at like 2% or 3%. Yeah. Um, but that was with other flavors in it. It's pretty good standalone, though. So I could, I mean, theoretically, 8% is probably okay if there's nothing else in it. And I don't, I don't, not, think, you, I don't right. think you'd taste anything else with 8% NFLV eggnog. But, I mean, theoretically, it's okay. I would probably personally start lower. But, I mean, I can't say no because I haven't tried it. I think the highest I've gone with that is like four or five percent, and that was just fucking around. And I mean, nothing tasted off. Like it was super intense. Like it got like super spicy, but like the thing with cranking up flavors that high is there's a question if it's if it's going to work in a mix. Which no, it isn't going to work in a mix. But you can crank flavors up a little bit higher, and like the breaking point is when they kind of fall apart, when they start to taste bad or floral or rancid or anything. Um, and I don't really get that with Flavor Eggnog, so I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. If she says she's trying to make a white chocolate peppermint eggnog, then I would definitely suggest dialing it way back, like start at 2 or 3%. Uh, what's a good percentage for uh, Flavor Cherry Filling? None. Zero. Zero percent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really water. struggle with Flavor's cherries. Uh, to be honest with you, I'd out of all their flavors, their cherry range is not my favorite. Uh, but it, I, I don't have any great advice. I'm sorry. Bryson, we love you. Your cherry <laughs> sucks. We, the cherry kind of sucks, man. Uh, I'm looking for my Capella apple pie. I want to test that. Oh, yeah. I, I know exactly what mine is because I just used it. I'll be right back. Here we go. I've got a bottle, too. We're doing some interactive, like, scratch and sniff stuff to the TV. Here we go. Um, okay, so there is not a good, there's not a great cherry. I use TPA cherry extract because it doesn't taste like plastic. It's weak, it's watery, it's not fantastic. My fucking earbuds turned inside out on me. But uh, cherry filling does not taste like, I mean, uh, TPA cherry extract does not taste like plastic. And that's the main reason I use that for my cherry. I did get Vape Trans Cherry in the range that Luke that Theo sent me, so I haven't tried theirs yet. I don't really get a hugely strong eggnog smell from the cap apple pie. Mostly it smells cinnamon. Yeah, there's cinnamon in there. I mean, it's definitely spiced. Oh, I just squirted a little bit up my nose on accident. Uh, oh, that tastes really bad on the back of the hand. Tastes okay in a mix, though, but... Yeah, I don't really get uh, like the nutmeg I expect with like uh, eggnog, but there is some cinnamon. I mean, maybe it's just that. Oh yeah, why did I do that? I just did that right after you said it was a bad idea. No, and there's some coconut like taste on the back of the hand too. It tastes like suntan lotion and grain alcohol with cinnamon. Yeah, that's bad. Why did I do that? <laughs> it's poor ideas. Oh, oh that's, that's that's horrendous. I um, you know, I don't, so that was like a thing that I, I never really did the knuckle test thing, 
very often. And then, but when we were at the show in Vegas, like fucking everybody was doing it. And I just found myself also doing it. Bad idea. And I did it too. And I knew it was a bad idea while I was doing it. Benjamin Horan, why, why would you do that? You see, so Benjamin Horan tasted Flavora wood spice on the back of his hand. Hey, I got to give it to you for balls, my dude. That's, that had to be violent. I really love, I really love uh, Flavora's wood spice. I love it. It's a really interesting, fun flavor. But no, no. I am. Um, I really don't like have top of your grandpa's like fucking cologne. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a sandalwood flavor. It's super intense. I get more um, cedar than sandalwood, but yeah, I mean, I mean, we're splitting hairs at that point yeah, for fuck's sake. Right. Uh, so I don't have vape trains cherry. I, I think you're really cool, Benjamin. I don't believe you, but I will definitely try it because I try every single cherry that I come across, no matter how bad they end up being. That may be the secret. Yeah. Bing Cherry, man. Bing Cherry was like the, the king of the world at the time. I loved Bing Cherry. I still have some that I've hoarded. But now I'm afraid to use it because I'll run out, right? <laughs> but it's good. I loved that Bing Cherry a lot. Innerwear Cherry and Innerwear Cherries can sometimes be manageable. Cherries, the plural, is better of the two. Uh, but cherries is like super dry though, and that's the one thing yeah, I don't see kind of people like addressing. Like it's super super dry. Mister Burgundy, I agree with you on the cherry crush. I like Flavor West Cherry Crush if you're careful with it. If you keep it low, if you crank it too high, it definitely goes like full on fucking Robitussin. And I don't mind FA Black Cherry though. A lot of people report that is ultra medicinal. Uh, see. Like the thing is, I just I want a cherry that I can crank though, and like that's always been the problem for me is like finding a cherry that I don't have to worry about using an extra couple percent without it turning into plastic or worry about the flavors around it. I just like the medicine flower cherries are taste okay, but you can't crank them; they don't work right. And you like, can't crank anything that's medicine flower. Honestly. Yeah, it, it's it's all just too soft. I just need a big, dumb cherry flavor that I don't have to worry about balancing. That would be nice. Um, uh, so there was like an actual question. Is, uh, is there any benefits in steeping juice without Nick and then adding Nick after steep time? Not um, really, no. Eh. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, you're probably not mixing at a high enough Nick percentage that you have to really worry about the Nick oxidizing, and it's kind of more of a pain in the ass. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess ultimately that really depends on how long you're steeping and what your steeping environment is like. If you're steeping in a cool, dark place, you know, it's reg fairly regulated temperature under 68 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit, sorry. Uh, you know, room temperature, right, under room temperature or slightly lower than room temperature. And it doesn't get a lot of exposed sunlight There's and you're steeping for like less than a year. You, there's no real big deal. Um, if you're steeping for really extended periods or you don't have ideal steeping circumstances, you have a little sunlight, you live somewhere really hot, whatever, uh, then yeah, adding Nick as you go is fine. But there's otherwise no real benefit. I mean, if you're um, trying to mix up multiple, if you're trying to get multiple different nicotine strengths out of the same batch too, like what you can do is you can steep your base mix with the VG and then add like the right PG and Nick at the end of it. It's not going to be like perfect or anything, but it will cut your steep a little bit and let, lets you steep a bigger batch of like a VG bakery. Yeah, I know that makes sense too. Yeah, absolutely. If you're, if you're using the batch to have multiple di like different, more than one nicotine strength, that obviously makes sense to, to steep without it. But I always still like to give it a couple of days with the nicotine to bond, right? Because I mean, ultimately, homogenization is the goal. Um, that's what that's what steeping's purpose is. And some flavors take longer to homogenize than others, namely bakeries and other things. But add a yellow fruits juice, peach passion fruit, with a geranium off note. He's talking flowers. Oh shit! <laughs> who made it? Do you know who made it? Peach passion passion fruit passion. Fruit. Geranium. So is that like geranial, like the ingredient like rose juices and stuff? Have you tried Osmanthus yet? No, no, I haven't. I That's haven't. Had like, do, you, can you, do you have it? No, I don't have it. Oh, what the fuck? I'll send you some. <laughs> uh, 
I get I know the geranium off note you're looking about you're talking about. It's the same one that's in um No, of course I wouldn't tell you. I just wanted to know who made it, what company made it. But if it's a person so like another person you know. Um what is this? There's two FA Summer Clouds. Yes. As a floral off note. Yeah, especially but that's like kind of more lavendery, like dryer sheets ish. Yeah, and then what was the other one? They have another one. Uh, their mangosteen has a pretty strong floral note. Yeah, I mean it could be mangosteen. Um, that does seem a little bit like perfumey. Yeah, so it could be flavor of mangosteen. Yes, I agree with Rusty. Threaten the person who won't tell you. <laughs> Pull a Suge Knight, hang him, uh, hang him out a hotel Rose. window. I, I have, I have tried the VTA Rose. It's pretty decent. Um, what the hell do you do with a rose? You pair it with dark berries or tea, or you don't. That's you take it and you throw it across the room. Rick doesn't like rose or no. rose flavors. No, um, no dark berries. Uh, maybe like watermelons too sometimes. Monsoon, that was the other one I was trying to fucking think of. And, you know, I don't think I've ever tried an F.A. Papaya. Now that I think of it off the top of my head. I think I've just papaya? heard enough bad things about it. the F.A. Tropical Fruits. I didn't really bother. Yeah, I mean, no offense to Flavor Art. They have a lot of great flavors, but most of their tropical line sucks pretty bad. Impressively bad, too, which is, like, it's an accomplishment, the few I do have. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. They do so many things so so very very well, but I feel like their tropical land suffered at some point. <laughs> I just I I just want to imagine like their mixer, I guess flavor chemist or whatever has just never even seen tropical fruit. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just didn't ever recover from like a terrible durian uh, incident or something. <laughs> You know what isn't overripe with a touch of weird floral note? Uh, I've really been liking Flavor West Natural Papaya. I don't think I have that. Yeah, shit's fire. My Good Flavor stuff. West uh, collection is like down to a pretty bare minimum. I'm down to like 30 or 40 of them. Maybe 50. I don't know. Less than 50. Um, my Flavor West collection is kind of lacking lately. I used up a bunch over the last like course of the... Like this last like 10 billion contracts that I've done in the last year and a half. And I, I just haven't replenished them at the rate that I've used them. Or a lot of them, I just didn't feel like I would end up using them again. Um, <laughs> but no, I'll add it to my, my list right now. I love that, Jar. Jar says, I have that one, Concrete. It's good for a flavor west. It's good for a flavor west. <laughs> I actually like a lot of the flavor west uh, natural line stuff. Like, it doesn't stick around worth a damn, but it's tasty. Yeah, a lot of that natural line, uh, that natural stuff is pretty good. Um, I need buying the, I need to replenish my Flavor West stuff soon, and I'm kind of getting low on a bunch of TPA stuff too. You missed Black Friday, my dude. Honestly, I didn't have any fucking money for Black Friday, man. Okay. <laughs> like I was broke ass this month. Like I put in a five flavor order for Black Friday, and I felt like I did my part for the nonsense. Oh yeah, that's the one, the natural kiwi. Yeah. So I was trying to think, oh, I like that one a lot. I like it almost as much as I like F.A. Kiwi, which is a lot. I like F.A. Kiwi a lot. F.A. Kiwi is the perfect trash flavor. Because it's so it's so easy to use, and you can push it like as high as you fucking want, and it, it doesn't kill you. Right? And, like it, it doesn't go, it takes a long time for it to go weird. Like you push it up to seven, eight, nine percent, and it's not terrible. I like it a lot. It's good, and it's got like, just enough tart. It's not as sweet as it could be. You usually need some sweetener, but I think it's a good flavor. Have a good night, Benjamin. Take care. Charge your fucking shit more often or something. I don't there's, know. There's, there's got to be a free power outlet at the mortuary or whatever. Wherever he works, right? No, like, works? seriously, there's something involving dead bodies. I don't know. It seems too spook too spooky for me. I'm not ready for that kind of... That kind of knowledge bomb today. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 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 And I'm starting to experience a kind of strange phenomenon in that I'm I'm almost I mean I'm way more able to taste uh it works in a crematorium. Jesus. 
That is pretty fucking spooky. Dad. How do you deal with the hauntings? Right? Why wow, he burns Almost them. constant hauntings. He sets them on fire. <laughs> Never ending supply of customers. Jarvis is bringing it down. Bringing it way down. He's, he, he's a body shoveler at the crematorium. I love it. <laughs> Chocolate lime boiled sweets. BTA Danic Bevin Cream and Innerware Lime. I want to suggest Innerware Lime, but I cannot because Innerware Lime is not the same Innerware Lime that I loved dearly. It is not bad. The new Innerware Lime is not bad, but it is not the old Innerware Lime. Yeah, but I mean, it's still not an awful lime flavor. I mean, no, it's not. I'm just terrified that they're going to fucking change it again. Yeah. <laughs> With the, the, I, I realize why, right? So the labs won't release. The disclosures for the TPD, and so yeah. they have no choice but to reformulate. Like I get that, but there has been like zero transparency until after the fact, in a lot of cases, um, that weren't on the original list of reformulations they re released before. <sighs> the old underwear lime is glorious, and I would agree with you. And it does go well in chocolate, but the new underwear lime would probably also be fine in chocolate, but it will not be as good. It's the old and aware line, and it makes me angry. So, shout out to Greg Hoffman. This is super cool, but I'm a noob, so you guys are so far out of my league. Um, we're not out of your league. We just talk about weird flavors. <laughs> we're just, yeah, we're just weird dudes that, that do this too much. If you're interested, Greg, there's a, a huge backlog. If you go back to our earliest videos, there's a whole range of beginners and a lot more in depth, like focused shows about flavoring. We've kind of had a bit of a wandering. Where we've we've covered a lot of information over the last year and year and a half, and so half the time we just kind of babble about shit. But <laughs> yeah, you guys press F for anywhere line. Yeah, and I've got a wrench so I can spam the fuck out of the channel, and they <laughs> they can't stop you. Who gave you a wrench, man? I don't know. It was a horrible decision. It's I'm always sure it was actually, I'm pretty sure it was actually me that did that because I I think I set up all the admins. Well, and you're you're not known for making horrible decisions, so we're good. Never. Never. <laughs> FA Candy Wizard. I've, I've been playing with that FA Candy Wizard a lot lately, dude. It is fucking cool stuff. I've been meaning to do that Candy Wizard next to some of the other Candy Wizards. It's just on, on my giant backlog of things I need to dig into because I got some and I smelled it. I was like, oh, I should do something fun with this, and then I did not. Yeah. Also, hop in if you get a chance to check out Flavor Pro Jennifer Jarvis. She's there in the chat. She's got a channel too, and she's got a ton of really fantastic uh, beginners videos. So, and she's more organized than we are. She is more organized, and you can actually understand what she's saying or talking about. Half of it isn't in jokes or dick jokes. So. And she's cuter than Rick. Uh, she's cuter than Koppel. I'm fucking gorgeous. Every, everybody's cuter than me. <laughs> right? Except my dog. She's a fucking retard. I don't know what's wrong with your dog. It was amazing. The best the best thing about meeting Koppel in person was seeing the photos of his dog and knowing he wasn't just picking out some random ugly dog from an internet. Like, his dog really is that ugly, and it's fantastic. She looks haunted by something terrible. Yeah, she is pretty fucking weird. It, uh, that dog has eyes like uh, Christina Ricci when she was, like, super skinny after, like, in her early 20s. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like she got like super skinny and she still looked like one of those like uh weird dolls, the ones that Tim Burton made the movie about or whatever. It was horrific. Uh FA makes the cold pressed lime, not Flavora. Flavora makes lime and lime wedge. I think that's it. They have another lime? It's just those two, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And lime wedge is delicious for five minutes. It fades really bad, or I get vapor stung from it really bad. I haven't figured out which. It destroys itself. It's good, though. It's really good. It's too beautiful to live, and it, it just destroys itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cold, cold press is definitely flavor art. It's good, though. I like I like cold press. I like all the flavor art. I bought both the flavor art limes, too, the Tahiti and the cold press, but they suffer from flavor fade, I think, worse than probably any other lime on the, on the market. They have the Florida Key Lime too. Which oh, the Florida actually, Key Lime, which is actually yeah. really nice, yeah. and it doesn't fade. I always, I don't know why I always forget that because it's probably their best one. Um, it's yeah, it's their best. Like, 
it's their best non Aurora cocktail lime, I guess. And I don't get, I don't get like a literal key lime from it. Like the same way that I get like, like straight up key lime from TPA's key lime, but it's still a really good lime and it doesn't fade as bad. It doesn't fade at all. Really. My, my favorite flavor at lime is still Aurora. Like I really like Aurora. I like Aurora is pretty good. I do like Aurora. I, but I think it just, I think it just uses a, one of their other lines. I'm not sure. I don't know, but whatever the fuck they're doing with it, I could vape Aurora straight, which is probably good because it's one of their emotions line. So, right, yeah. Theoretically, it's a one shot by itself because it's named for a feeling and not a thing. That's how you could tell the Italians want you to mix it as a one shot. I agree, except for Soho. I like to I like to add shit to Soho all the time. Dude, Soho's, Soho's all right by itself, but I tried to like Soho. I really did, but I can't get around like that anisey like black licorice note thing that it picks up. I don't get it. I totally get it. I, no, I'm not saying that it's not there. I'm just saying I don't taste it. Yet. Citrusy powder note, citrus powdery note from Aurora. Driver says, huh, probably. Drivers can also smell it when you open a bottle of DPA strawberry down the street from her. So, <laughs> um, good the good Flavora teas. Uh, the okay, the black tea is okay. It doesn't taste too earthy, but it does have quite a bit of jasmine to it, which is sort of interesting. It's kind of a difficult flavor to mix with. Uh, their green tea has like a minty thing going on too, which is sort of interesting. Like it's not a bad flavor. It's just hard to use for a straight green tea. Uh, my favorite green tea combo right now is like 2% Favora's SIE tea with um, half a percent or like 0.25% of Favora's green tea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't really had a chance. I, I know the teas came out like almost a year ago probably now, right? Yeah, it's been Matt. And I haven't I haven't fucked with them nearly as much as I wanted to. But given that it's cold weather and I actually have some free time, I might have to dig them out and fuck with them a bit. Uh Vape Train Persian Lime and Cold Press work really good together too. I could see that. I really like the Persian Lime a lot. The Vape Train Persian Lime. Yeah. It's a pretty good lime. Um Flavora red tea isn't necessarily something that I suggest you pick up just for the fuck of it. But if you're ever looking for that kind of like Rehoibus, that uh, that rhombus tea kind of flavor. It's actually pretty good. It does get a little bit nutty, but it has more of like an herbal tea quality, almost like a hibiscus tea or something, but like with peanuts too. It's super weird. I'll have to check that out. I like sound of that. Andre Roth, you're a, you're a filthy, filthy man. <laughs> See that? TPA black tea believer. Never tasted anything better. Do you eat your vegetables roots directly out of the garden also? Like it literally tastes like dirt to me. Like every like half a percent to three percent, it's all dirt. It just tastes like dirt, like literal earth. Um, <laughs> the one thing I've done with their red tea, because I haven't met I haven't really needed to mess around with it a whole lot, but the one thing I did do with the red tea was mix it with a bunch of cap, Fuji apple, uh, because it's like nice and wet and some extra spices and stuff. And that seemed to work out pretty well. So I think if you're looking for like an herbal, slightly nutty tea thing and you really want to buy another tea flavor, the red tea is pretty well implemented. D. Millen hasn't been in here to talk trash about Vanilla Swirl one time today. Yeah. What's happening? I feel like we haven't even had a show yet. Yeah, no, TPA Black Tea was horrible. I, I, I literally destroyed an atomizer because of TPA Black Tea. Like I took it outside with a hammer and smashed it. Because it was that bad. <laughs> it was that fucking bad. It was a magma, an OG magma. And uh, I soaked it in isopropyl alcohol for two days after vaping black tea in it. It was, it, it just, it would not come out. Like, took, it replaced the fucking O rings, everything, everything. Did everything I'm supposed to do. There was, you just couldn't save it, man. It was done. It ruined it. I can't say. I mean, more power to you that you're able to vape it. I'll send you all of mine. But uh, TPA chai tea is just death by spice. It has a good chai spice, but it's 
just a really fucking strong spice. I don't get any tea out of it at all. There she is. Fucking Jarvis. Jarvis and bringing the hate. Oh, and I was saying, Midland. yeah, right. right underneath. So. Um, okay, so Rusty, like, I don't get any specific tobacco notes out of that red tea. I do think it is fairly close to, like, that rooibos tea or whatever they're going for. Um, it does have some, like, nuttier things, but I think more, like, slightly earthy, like, peanutty kind of taste rather than tobacco. But it would work with tobacco kind of flavors, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But the reason the reason I like for Vanilla Swirl is for its utility, not for its literal flavor. Although its flavor is not bad, it's just so goddamn useful. Yeah, I mean, you just throw it on recipes to collapse them into just thick bands of a solid flavor. It's it's an offensive amount of vanillin and diacetyl, basically, right? No, I I think it's uh, dat free. Is it dat free? Yeah, I think. I thought it had diacetyl. I don't know. It's got a little bit of that buttery vibe. Average. average tasters. Man, I am the definition of average to sub average taster, and I'd bring in, love bringing the shit. fire today. What the yeah. fuck? You fucking ivory tower with your super tasting. I'm just over here with a bottle of vanilla swirl, just getting high off the fumes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's spice note at TPHIT is really, it's really impressive, man. Andre, or whoever, somebody else originally asked, I can't remember. Oh, Rusty. <laughs> Sorry. I was too busy being offended by the anti vanilla world talk in my chat. Shut it down. <laughs> there we go. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Vanilla Swirl Illuminati. It's the best way to make something appealing and mediocre. I love it. Uh, it's like the new Oba Oba, right? Like, that's it. That's, uh, there I said it. I use yeah, it more often. The same genre more. of like, yeah, weird mystery flavors. I love it. I still use Oba Oba for tobaccos more than the most world, but if we didn't need every single viewer that we have, I would totally like. I would totally time out to Millen right now every time she said something about vanilla swirl. But our viewership can't stand the can't stand the hit. No, she's just still salty because you voted for a recipe that had vanilla swirl in it in the contest in Vegas. Hey, I think my signature had vanilla swirl in there too. Not a lot of it, but yeah, there's a little bit of swirl. And Oba Oba. Oba. Yeah. Yeah, no, nothing can ever replace Oba Oba. It's pretty much my favorite thing ever on the face of the planet. I just used both because I, I literally have the uh, palate of a five year old. It's fantastic. I mean, Oba Oba is fantastic, anyways, but it's like a weird mystery marshmallow. Well, I'm glad you like it, T Millen. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, look for it maybe being released as a one shot in the near future. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Let's see if if they can put up with our shit for another year. We're Everybody. flying blind. <laughs> uh, trap again. Like it's funny because that recipe was a profile that I worked on for like a year, but the recipe that I actually brought to the show was like a hail mary that I mixed three days before the show and never tested. Like I was like ninety percent sure about it, but I just wasn't completely, and I changed it up because I fucking second guessed everything I do, like I always do. Yeah, yeah. Very often asked about oba oba. Uh, flavor art makes a flavor called oba oba, and it's like this kind of vague, sweet marshmallow thing that does magical things for recipes, but the specific flavor itself isn't all that great. No, it's okay. You don't have to. No, don't, don't, don't feel sorry, man. That's what we're here for is to answer questions. It's it's a pretty strange flavor. It's more of a texture, like almost a candy texturizer, but not like any candy you'd actually want to eat. It's kind of like a cream soda hard candy with a little bit of body. It's a very strange thing. Yeah, it's weird, but man, it can do some really cool stuff. I like it a lot. All right. Well, we hit about our hour here today. Any last minute questions from chat. What would I mix Oba Oba with? Yes. That is the answer. Yes, I would mix it with yes, everything. Uh, no, so it's, yeah, it's like the candy coating outside of like, I don't know, like a crack candy kind of coating or whatever, but it's really cool. 
Um, it goes really well with really bright fruits. It can knock the sharp edges off fruits. So if you want to mix it with like a shit ton of lime or like a really bright like strawberry or raspberry for like a really simple mix, it will work really well there. Um, it also does a really good job of taking shitty, like not shitty, but just the drier, thinner tobaccos that you're going to like maybe build into an RY4 or a vaguely sweeter tobacco. Um, it does a really good job of like taming those like nastier dry notes. So it's pretty cool stuff. Turns them into jelly beans. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's more like it turns them into the, for, see for me, like, I mean, maybe I just use it too high all the time compared to Jennifer, which is probably likely, <laughs> uh, but I get more of like the, the jelly bean filling than I do from the actual, than I do from like the jelly bean outer. It just makes the flavor, it just makes sharp fruit flavors a lot softer and like more filled out, which is kind of where I use it for the most Definitely. part. And I really like it with stone fruits like peaches and stuff because it helps kind of take away from that throat uh, razor. The, not just the throat razor, but like the, the musky overripeness of most like peach flavors. So yeah, that's it. Oba Oba goes into everything. End of story. Have a good night. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening. See you all next week. Smash the the likes and the and the bells and the Smash things. Smash that like button. I'm pretty sure that everybody in here has already done that. And yeah. if you haven't, well, we love you anyways. Uh, thanks Have for you. watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. And be watching for some more cool stuff soon. Cheers.